Hello everyone and welcome to the Hippie Geeks. If you have an older car and the front end is making a horrible rattling sound, it might be time to install new shocks. In newer cars, shocks have been replaced with struts for the most part, which are considerably more involved to swap out. It is pretty easy to tell what your vehicle has, however, just pull off one of your tires and take a look. In our Saab 900, you can see the shock on the left and the spring on the right. In a car with struts, it will look like a combination of the two with a shock inside of the spring. Luckily for us, this car has shocks, so let's get going. With this car, the first thing to do is take a plain screwdriver and pop off the center cap to expose the lug nuts. You want to loosen each lug nut a little bit before jacking the car up off the ground. Whenever you are loosening or tightening lug nuts, you want to do them in a crossing pattern as opposed to going around in a circle. Once you have all of the lug nuts loosened, place your jack under the jack point and raise the car up enough to have the tire clear the ground. Once the tire is off the ground, finish removing all of the lug nuts, pull the tire off of the hub and set it aside. Looking behind the brake rotor, you can see where the bottom of the shock is attached. We need to remove this nut and it will very likely be hard to remove. If this nut does start to seize up as you are removing it, you need to hit it with a penetrating lubricant like WD-40. If you just keep trying to remove the nut without any lubricant, there is a very real chance that you will actually twist the bolt off, leaving you in a world of hurt. Just take your time, use plenty of lubricant, and carefully remove the nut. Once you have the lower nut removed, it's time to remove the nut that holds the top of the shock. In a classic Saab 900, this is a complete pain in the rear. There is very little room to work with, and of course the nuts are pretty corroded. I spent a bit of time on this part, trying to follow the instructions I had read. I was instructed to use a pipe wrench to hold the upper portion of the shock while using a socket wrench with a couple of extensions and an angled adapter on the top. Unfortunately, the shocks that are on the car have a plastic upper shroud, so there is no grabbing that. I cut off the plastic shroud and tried holding onto the shaft with a pair of vice grips, both on the bare metal and with some rubber to help with grip. It didn't work. I could not get the top nut loosened. So I thought about it for a second and decided to just cut the buggered thing off. At the top of the shock, you can see a rubber spacer. Cut that rubber spacer out and then just cut through the shaft with an angle grinder. If you do not have access to an angle grinder, I highly recommend picking one up. They are incredibly useful for a ton of projects and I cannot imagine not having one. Now that the old shock is removed, it's time to get the new one on there. Take your new shock, unscrew the top nut and remove the nut, top washer, and top rubber bushing. Remember the order they go in and the orientation of the rubber bushing as they will typically be made to go one way. Head back into the wheel well and slide the post up into its hole first. Once you have done that, slide the bottom rubber bushing onto the existing bolt, followed by the washer and finally the nut. Get it tightened back down and now it's time to do the top attachment. This is going to be a lot easier to do if you have a second jack available to put some pressure on the lower swing arm. This will snug the upper bushing against the mount and give you access to more of the threaded end on top. Warning, what I am about to do can ruin your shock if it is done improperly. If you scar up the shaft on your shock, it will chew up the seals and ruin them in no time. 
do not do this incorrectly. The proper way to tighten up the top nut on the shocks is to use two different box ended wrenches, a larger one to move the nut, and a very small one to hold the flattened tip of the shaft in place. In this car, there simply isn't enough room to fit both wrenches and my hands. You have been warned. This worked great for me, but I was super careful. I pulled the plastic protector down to expose the shaft. I then took a piece of old bicycle inner tube, folded it a couple of times and placed it into the jaws of a pair of vice grips. Carefully clamped the vice grips onto the shaft, being sure to place rubber between the shaft and the vice grips. As you tighten the upper nut, the shaft will rotate until the vice grips hit the wheel well, which will then allow you to tighten the nut down all the way. Once the vice grips are set up, take your socket wrench with a couple of extensions, a deep socket and an angled connector and head back on top. Place the rubber bushing, washer and nut onto the threaded shaft and start tightening it down. As that happens, you can see the bushing compressing until you get it tightened properly. Pop the vice grips off of the shaft, push the plastic shield back into place and you are done. Get your tire back on and finger tighten the lug nuts. You don't want to crank down on them until the tire is back on the ground. If you do, there is a good chance you will push your car right off the jack. Once it is on the ground, finish tightening the lug nuts and pop the center cap back on. Lower the jack and head over to the other side and repeat the process there. You will be amazed at the difference in the handling and noise that replacing the shocks will make. Lindsay is thrilled with how the car is handling, and the next project to tackle will be the rear shocks. What is the latest project you folks have done? I'm always curious to know how other folks are doing with the projects in their lives. If this is your first time here on the Hippie Geeks, it would be wonderful to have you subscribe. This channel is all about helping you unleash your life and create a world that you love. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, leave a comment, and check back every week for new videos. Thanks again, and we will see you on the next one.